right, Doug, I'm really excited to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress and talk service assurance. But before we get into how things are changing with 5G, maybe you can give us a little description of how service assurance is typically being done in 3G and 4G. Yeah, so I mean, if you, if you date back the last uh, few years, quite frankly, all the way back to the last decade, the traditional approach to service assurance has always been centered around probing or passive probing in particular. And what that means is we take key points within the network, we place these passive probes that collect all this information in real time, they mediate that data, and then they basically percolate it up to a user interface by way of reporting. Uh, however, you know, you're, you're kind of subject or slave, if you will, to the KPIs as determined by the data set itself. That's, that's been kind of the, I'll, I'll say, a standardized approach for, for quite some time now. Okay, so now in the 5G era, what needs to change? Well, I, a lot, uh, as we're learning both in real time as well as over the last couple of years, as we've seen more and more, I'll say, attempts at 5G standalone deployments that have effectively turned into non-standalone deployments with even longer tails uh, associated with it. But one of the biggest, one of the biggest changes that 5G brings is really centered around this concept of disaggregation. So there's really two fundamental aspects of any 5G network. It's virtualization and disaggregation because effectively what we're doing is we're taking infrastructure that used to be very neat and nice and tidy and it was all in my self-contained, self-managed data center and now we're disaggregating that infrastructure, we're virtualizing it and we're effectively distributing it out to the point of contact where the consumer is consuming these next generation services regardless of what they may be. So effectively what that means is we're taking what used to be really large monolithic pieces of hardware sitting in a data center and we're now making them virtual functions throughout a very large, very distributed network. So as that relates to service assurance, now take that back to the passive probing concept. Where do you put your probe? When suddenly your network went from four key locations to any one of a thousand locations, and by the way, it can change overnight pending some performance criteria that we've built into the QoS system or, or something related to that. So that's been the biggest, or I'll say one of the key fundamental challenges that 5G represents to a next generation, I'll say approach to, to service assurance. Okay, so virtualization, disaggregation, decentralization. Now as we get closer to seeing operators invest in that transition from non-standalone to standalone 5G and in the end cloudification. What does that mean for service assurance? Yeah, so what it means is a different approach, a, a new approach holistically. And so while there's never one perfect or I'll say purest way to gaining the visibility necessary, what we have determined uh, is I'll say best suited for a fully disaggregated 5G standalone network is really active agents, or, or, or I should say active test capability, and more importantly, embedded active test capability, becoming a fundamental part of service assurance. This doesn't necessarily negate or do away with passive probing capability, but what it does is it provides full visibility or full coverage across the entirety of the network that these service providers now have to triage and, and troubleshoot. And one of the key differentiators in using an embedded active test capability is the test infrastructure or the assurance infrastructure now looks and feels and operates exactly like the network infrastructure itself because it's an embedded part of that virtual function, whether it be a UPF, an AMF, or an SMF function, depending on, on which we're, what we're talking about and what you're deploying. That becomes a critical piece to this puzzle is having an assurance solution that literally moves, it operates, and it is manipulated the exact same way that the, technically this software-defined network, if we want to use that term, uh, operates in and of itself. Okay, so a lot of complexity to manage there. Can AI and ML help ease that a little bit? It, it certainly can. Uh, so what we're seeing as an industry is we, we kind of have, it, I, I view this as a multi-hurdle type of, of continuum uh, or, or advancement. First stage is just the industry itself figuring out that a different way is necessary. Uh, part of the reason, quite frankly, just to be transparent, that I came to Spirant is 5G in and of itself from an infrastructure perspective represented a fundamentally different way for me that 
our customers are going to have to implement a different way if they are gaining the visibility necessary to triage and troubleshoot these very tough problems that they have. So where ML plays, that's kind of the secondary uh, piece. And what I mean by that is one of the advantages we get with Active Assurance is it's a deterministic data set. So that's what makes it attractive is we put it in this virtual environment and we drive these active test agents throughout the virtual environment. Well, the data set we're using is deterministic, predicated on everything from 3GPP standards to self-prescribed SLAs that are predicated on, you know, the edge compute services that are being delivered themselves. That's where we start getting into ML AI models or the application of, hey, how do we separate a deterministic data set? SLAs are easy, right? That's you bought a service from me, you expect this type of jitter, packet loss, and latency, and I'm either meeting those parameters or I'm not. Where ML comes into play is how do we learn within the network itself, not what you determine or what I determine is, is normal or good, but how does the system itself determine, hey, if those users were to be routed through Austin, Texas versus Atlanta, Georgia, they would receive 30% better performance, regardless of what the KPI or parameter is. These are all applications of ML that we are utilizing today. Just to be clear, we are, we are utilizing them in the system today. But it's, again, part of the evolution of the industry first needs to figure out there's a better way, and then we need to apply ML AI as an even better way on top of that, on top of that better way. So how is Spiron addressing all of this from a product perspective? How are you enabling your customers to do what we've discussed in the real world? Yeah, so there are a couple of applications uh, uh, that we have applied, a couple of products specifically that we've, we've brought to market. Uh, one is known as VisionWorks. Uh, VisionWorks uh, applies all the technology, all the deployment capability, the flexibility and extensibility uh, that I talked about previously. Uh, however, VisionWorks was really built as an ecosystem or more of a platform approach to solving this active test and this disaggregation problem. And what that brings with it is infinite flexibility and extensibility, which is, you know, words that any carrier on the planet Earth love to hear. However, in that flexibility and extensibility in the sense that it can plug into any BSS or OSS system, it can do, you know, downstream API calls to, you know, any data set available, it, it, there's a, a certain amount of complexity built in there. So, that is a platform that we really see very attractive or consumable by the big tier one carriers in the market. So what we've learned through that process is that there is a very large contingent of carriers, providers, uh, ecosystem players in the form of MVNOs or MVNEs that want access or need access to 4 and 5G service assurance from an active test perspective but they don't need all of the bells and whistles, all of that complexity northbound and southbound. So just uh, toward the end of last year, we recently uh, uh, introduced a brand new product called Vantage. And what Vantage is meant to bring to market is all the best of breed active test capabilities, but we have made some decisions on behalf of our customers that have provided this feedback for us uh, that we pre-integrate the test. So it's as simple as you install the system, you turn it on, you give it the topology map, and then away you go. So its claim to fame is, quite frankly, I think, uh, and, and I have pretty good authority to state this, it's about 30 minutes door to door from the moment you install it to instantiation of your first test across the telco infrastructure. And that's, that's unheard of in the industry. Well, Doug, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk me and our audience through how Spiron is helping their operator customers really make the most of this 5G era. You bet, Sean. Thanks. Appreciate it.